am the author of The Barren Grounds. It is a middle grade fantasy that is about two Cree foster children who discover a portal into another world um, called Eski, which is Cree for Earth. And they help the animal beings in that world, which has been cast into an eternal winter, um, find a way to save the world, really. And so it's, um, it's, a, it's a story about uh, an, an adventure story, and it's also, I think, a journey of self-discovery. So this is just a short excerpt that um, is when the Morgan and Eli, who are the main characters, open the portal for the very first time. And they're putting staples into the paper, into, the, into a drawing they place on a wall. So, thwack, an avalanche of freezing air burst through the paper and pushed both of them back, almost to the opposite wall. And then it was gone. Morgan's hair was crazy, like she'd just woken up or stuck her finger in an electrical socket. Even Eli's hair, usually perfectly braided, slick and beautiful, had strands blown out of place. The attic was cold. The wind had come out like a lightning bolt, abruptly stopping each time, and it left behind a lingering chill. There was one corner left to staple. Morgan placed the staple gun against the last corner. Ready, she asked. Ready, he said. Thwack. The blizzard in the drawing, once just pencil lines, stormed into the attic room. The kid stumbled backwards against the wall. Morgan tried to move to the side, out of the way of the wind, but there was no escaping it, and this time it was unrelenting. It wasn't just wind either. Snow was pouring into the room, so fast and hard that it stung against Morgan's skin. She raised her arm in front of her face to shield it from the onslaught. Eli did the same. Within seconds, the floor was covered in white flakes. Morgan peeked over her arm to look at the paper fastened to the wall. It had been a drawing, but not anymore. Now it was a window. But the window didn't open to the world outside the house. It opened to the world that Eli had created, the world that Morgan had pictured that morning. She could see the blizzard, both in the attic and in the picture. She could see the near endless field of snow. She could see just barely the tree line far in the distance. She could see shimmering lights like tiny stars from the village. She could see the fissure. Um, yeah, I had a couple of inspirations to, uh, to write The Barren Grounds. Um, it's, it's actually a story I've been thinking about for a long time. Um, my first novel, The Evolution of Alice, had a, a character in it that was a ghost living in an apartment building in Winnipeg. Um, and had uh, a ghost that used to stare at the ceiling full of tack holes. And I had a whole backstory for this ghost where she had, um, she had used to be a person who post tack pictures on the walls and opened open doorways to different realities. And it was, uh, so it was, it was, she was also a foster child, but it was an adult story. And so at one point I decided to return to that and, uh, to, but to write it as a middle grade novel. Um, so this whole portal thing has always, always really interested me. Um, the elements that I wanted to incorporate into the story also were a big inspiration. Um, the further I've gone along in my career, I wanted to talk more and more about the foster care system. I want to talk more and more about um, Cree and Indigenous legends and mythology. And so um, I made them foster care children because I wanted kids to learn about the foster care system and its impact on Indigenous children in a way that was, wasn't traumatic for them, in a way that they could kind of understand and have an introduction to, um, and understand like the disconnect and, and what that does to children. Um, and then uh, just, I, I've always been interested in Cree stories of the sky and, and the stars. And so um, the, the Fisher constellation is actually a, a, a big dipper. Um, and there are stories about how the Fisher constellation came to be. And, um, and so I adapted that myth, that myth, that legend into the barren grounds. And what I found was as I was, as I was reading through and researching this story, um, there were a lot of par parallels to some of the aspects of Narnia, just incidentally. And, um, and I've also been really interested in um, classical lit lit literature lately. Um, and well, actually for a while and, and how I could reimagine some of those classic stories um, in an, in an indigenous lens. And so uh, the Chronicles of Narnia were a big inspiration for me in crafting um, this book and the series as well. So the whole series is 
is about the foster care system. It's about Cree um, legends about the sky and the stars, um, and also drawing inspiration from the, the literature that I loved and read as a child from an Indigenous perspective, because we just didn't have that perspective when I was young. I thought that was important for kids to, to have access to and to be able to read stories about Indigenous characters by Indigenous writers. Really glad there are uh, resources available to, for teaching the Bear Grounds in class. All the literature that I do, I, I, I hope in the end that it's brought into the classroom. And so there's an incredible uh, teacher's guide on the Tundra website that will assist teachers in, in, in uh, crafting lessons around the book. Um, one of my favorite ones talks about the differences between, well, really comparing and contrasting the, the stories of uh, the Fisher constellation and then the more the westernized view of the Big Dipper constellation, and um, and then and thinking about critically about you know why do we do, why do we learn and know this story so well, and why is this a story that we have never heard of um, and is never brought into the classroom, and so I think it's also it op it opens up more dialogue about um, the ad the really the overpowering presence of Western teachings and philosophies and education in the classroom as opposed to Indigenous thought and perspective. So I think that's a really important thing to think about. One of the things that I've always loved as a writer, almost as much as writing, is being able to see see kids, like to go to the classroom and see kids face to face. And I've I've been lucky enough to be able to do that. Um, it's more difficult now because of the pandemic, but um, I'm still always available to do virtual visits in the classroom. So you can always get in touch with me through my website, which is darobertson.ca, um, or you can find me on Twitter at Dave Alex Roberts, um, and me just message me from there, and uh, we can work something out. I'd love to come and uh, in through your monitor and uh, and and visit and visit with your kids, do a reading, and ask and answer questions. Thanks for listening. I am David A. Robertson, and I hope you check out the Barren Grounds. Welcome to Missoula.